everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I've got Laura Barat here, and she's a Vedic astrologer in Colorado. And we're going to talk about Varsha Fall today. It's the solar return system, so it should be very exciting. Welcome to my channel, Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, I did a, a, a talk with her almost a year ago or so, and I've been no, aware that she's been working on this on Varshafa a lot over the last year or two and or even longer I'm not sure but she's got this course now about the solar return system the Varshafa system and uh, she actually pretty much had an entire book ready but she decided to turn it into a, a learning course and it comes with videos and all these things so we're going to talk about that today and kind of like promote that because I've recently gotten really into this Tajika solar return stuff so tell us a little bit about that Laura. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, Tajika is a great system. Varshafal, Tajika, and Western astrology, they call it the solar return. Uh, it's what I mainly use to predict with. Um, and just because you can, get, you can get that narrow time window really down sometimes to within the day. And, um, and what's great about Varshafal is that immediately when you look at a chart, you've already got like four or five things to look at to concentrate on during the year. You know, you've got the year Lord, you've got a planet in the ascendant, you've got the month, uh, the month of Lord, all these things are going to point you, oh, okay, so certain things are going to happen this year, just based on those few things, you know, um, yeah. super, easy, super, um, in addition to transits, focusing, focusing on transits, this really works so well. And um, yeah, I made it into a course because uh, there have been quite a few books written uh, based on the Nila Kantha, Kantha uh, system, okay. system. And um, so it's just kind of rehashing those principles that he talks about, which are, which are the 16 Tajika Yogas and also Shahams, which are basically Arabic parts. In right. Western astrology. So um, it's just kind of rehashing all of that and then in giving examples and explaining examples. And I can do that much better in a course, I think, than writing a whole book. For a book, I want to do something more where I come up with my own system or, you yeah. know, I'm interested in something. Yeah, that so. makes sense. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, and it really does have a lot of examples, I have to say. It's very, very thorough because I was looking through it earlier and yeah, I, I think most of the time I can look through a PDF in the in the course of an afternoon. I was like, wow, this just keeps going. There's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> and um, and yeah, like, okay, let's go ahead and break down some of the terminology of things because that surprised me. So I thought parts of fortune were something that weren't at all a part of Vedic astrology, but that is the same thing as the Shahams or Sahams or um, mm -hmm. are we Shahams, saying? Yeah. yeah. And um, um, yeah. There are, there are several uh, parts or several shahams mm -hmm. and, um, and part of fortune is just one of them. In, the, uh, in this system, the most important shaham is the auspicious shaham, which is the part of fortune in Western astrology. However, they calculate it a little differently. Um, they calculate it the same whether you were born during the day or during the night in this oh, system. Right calculate it differently if you're born at night but um what what's so much fun about this this system is even without software you already going to get an idea of what the year is going to bring and you do that by every year you've got something called the mantha which is the progressed ascendant right and it, and it progresses a year or a sign every year so when you're born the mantha is your birth ascendant. When you from age one to two, it's the second sign from that. From age three to four, it's the it's the third sign from that, and so on. So you go mm -hmm. around the zodiac. So based on your age alone, you you get to un, know what your mantha is. And so then at twelve, it's the same, and at twenty four, it's the same. And right, right, okay, just so, just yep. so mm -hmm. it's the same ascendant. Yeah. And so what becomes very important is the mantha is what links that year to our whole life. Um, the mantha is linking our birth chart with the solar return chart. And okay. so the mantha is extremely important um, to ascertain what's going to happen during the year, what the person's going to focus on, 
what is tying their life right now into uh, what is their, you know, their birth karma, their mm -hmm. chart. Yeah. So, um, you know, you go through the, the houses and they all mean different things uh, and you're concentrating on different things. So, yeah, I mean, I was astonished when I started looking at just the month of Lord for different years of my life, you know, and what I was focused on or, oh, when it was in the 10th house, that was a really, I was just free to do all kinds of whatever I wanted that year compared to other years when it was in the sixth house or something. And I felt more stuck maybe, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Your examples gave all kinds of yeah, really cool examples. We can go into that in a minute, I guess. So, yeah. so you've got the month of Lord, then you've got your year Lord, right? You could tell us a little bit about that if you want. Yes, the year Lord is a little more difficult to calculate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have, usually you have to have software, but you can calculate it manually. And in my course, I go through um, step by step how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But um, but the year board also has a major impact on the year. So based on the year Lord loan, you can make predictions. For example, if Venus is your year Lord, you're probably going to have relationships as a, a focus of the year. Yeah. Um, already married or in a relationship and Venus, all the things Venus rules like luxuries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, pampering yourself, you can get into that, you know, Venus rules food and drink. You can, um, Venus is all of the things the world has to offer you, all yeah. of the good things the world brings. So your life gets a lot more worldly when you have Venus as the year Lord. Um, you know, you're, you're being a diplomat. If you're not being in a relationship, you're doing other Venetian type of things, which involves interaction with others usually. And, yeah. uh, that and, oh gosh so so it's that simple and that's almost what threw me off initially was that i was like i needed it to be more complicated i think when i first tried studying yeah. it and then i recently got more into it again and just seeing how how obvious it was like venus is your year lord and you get married that year or something just really simple um yeah so okay so you got your year lord and then there's uh there's a few other important things, right? There's like, uh, we don't to, and then your ascendant Lord, the ascendant Lord and where it's at and what it's doing is really important. And then there's sure. like the whole system of different strengths though, right? There's like the punch of our gear. You could, can you talk a little bit about that? How they have different yes, strengths? Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you've got um, the punch of our Bala, which is the five strengths. Then you've got the Dwadasha of Bala, the 12 strengths and then Harsha. And those are three categories of, of types of strengths. And what that means is the five strengths of so the Panchavargya mm -hmm. Bala is um, how much power does a planet have to perform during that year? If a, if a planet has less than five points, and this is all in the Kala software, and they calculate mm -hmm. it for you, um, then that planet, if, some, if a client comes to you and says, okay, am I going to have a child during this year? Or am I going to make a lot of money this year? And Jupiter has less than five points in that Panchavargya Bala. You can say no unequivocally <laughs> okay. because he, he does not have the power to produce. Right. Okay. Um, anything between five and 10 points is considered mediocre. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, eh, and that's when it gets a little harder to right. predict this or no. And you've got to look at um, the transits. You've got to look at the aspects in the Varsha fall. You've got to look at whether Jupiter is in good divisional charts, you know, in a good position than Avamsha or um, okay. some of the others. But, um, but if a planet, you always want a, a year where the year Lord is strong. You want to make sure your year Lord is above 10, you know, ideally. That means that it will be a productive year regarding that planet and what it has to offer. And then if I'm remembering correctly, so that, yeah, the Panchivargi is like maybe like the overall punch it has, if we can remember it, <laughs> use a yeah. verbal yeah, association. And then yep. the uh, Dwadarsha, that, that one, the Dwadarsha Vargia Bala is like more of the auspicious or inauspicious power. Is that correct? Right. right that's right. Absolutely. Uh, um, that has to do with how ben benefic that planet is. And that means, okay, so when a, when a planet is strong in Panchavargya Bala, it will produce. It's going to produce for you. But how stressful that is, is mm -hmm. based on that Dwada, um, Dwada, 
Dwa Dasha of Argiavala. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, it, it, um, it will, if it's high, like if they, um, just for example, I'm already looking at your chart for this year, yeah, but you you, your Jupiter in a plus 11, negative one, that's really auspicious. So that means, you know, you're not going to have Ooh. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a good year. Yeah, you're it has not going to have a lot of stress, and you're not going to be, you know, working so hard to mm -hmm. make Jupiter produce for you. It's just going to produce for you. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, without much sense. stress. Without so, much stress. Okay. So if a, if uh, let's say that if a planet was really had had the really low points, then maybe it's still you have a good uh, say Venus is your year lord you you've got Venus with good punch 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 of argia bar, bar, blah, that one um and it can produce a lot of an impact but maybe the relationship you get involved causes you a lot of stress and chaos and things when Venus has the low points that's exactly true yes okay, absolutely Okay. Yeah, how you feel about it and how it's unfolding for you, that's mm -hmm. the Dwadasha Vargiyabala, the 12 strengths. Okay, cool. Okay, so, now. And then we have the Harsha one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, harsha means bristling. And um, so it's ready to go. Harsha means how excited you are for it, how much enthusiasm you have for something. So, um, so ten, zero is really low. Zero and five are really low. Mm -hmm. 10 is average. Mm -hmm. 15 and 20 are rare and to go. When you say, when you see a year where that harsh Shabala is high, mm -hmm. um, where you have a lot of 15s and maybe a 20, mm -hmm. uh, you don't see 20 very often, but when you do, oh my gosh, this person is so enthused and so excited to do whatever. They're, they're just so full of inspiration. So, um, so that's, uh, you could usually predict that year is going to be very exciting and fun for them. Right. Even so though there's just a lot more fun. excitement going on in the chart. Right. <laughs> right. This is so into it, you know, whatever yeah. they're doing, they're just so excited and can't wait to do it. Okay. And you can predict that year is going to be really good, even though maybe the Varsha fall, you know, it's got a sixth house month or an eighth house month and you know, no, none of the planets are, are strong or they're inauspicious, but mm -hmm. the person has so much enthusiasm that it doesn't even matter. You know, they're, they're just so excited to be doing what they're doing. It's just that, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. And you'll notice too, if you see a year that has a lot of high, harsh strength, mm -hmm. you'll notice in the next year following that year, that usually that person has really strong planets of whatever they wanted to accomplish in the previous year because they had so much enthusiasm oh. in that previous year and then all of that karma all of their work finally starts to pay off oh, and they start okay. to reap the benefits of all that enthusiasm they had the year before gotcha so it's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting the way that works out so <laughs> and, and you know and that's it needs to be kept in mind like everything we're talking about is down just one year of the person's life and that's what just automatically makes it so efficient so useful and um i know you already know this but for some of the viewers like even that uh prophet edgar casey the sleeping prophet taught he had a few comments about saying how the tajika or the persian system of astrology was one of the most accurate in terms of predictions and a lot of people think he was referring to this you know and um, have you ever heard that idea or whatever? I, I haven't. He, oh, did he yeah. Um, I, I mean, everything about him is kind of controversial, I guess. But yeah, he said that and he mentioned that this that this system. Yeah, he actually spoke really high things regarding this particular system with predictions. And then, you know, uh, in one of the books I was reading, maybe it was you guys. This isn't this is a pretty good basic book Var, uh, by this guy. K.S. Chirac, uh, textbook of Varshafal, if you guys are also want. Laura's is better though, the course, if you're going to just get one, maybe, but <laughs> supplemental. Yeah, you know. Mine's definitely better. You get video, you get yeah. video online too. So yeah, we're going to talk about that more in a minute, but um, yeah, I think it was in that or somewhere in one of the books they're talking about how the, the Parashura system is more popular, but so complicated and, and it can be easy to make mistakes that it seems like over time in India, people started giving this a lot of preference and favor because it was so a king could just ask his astrologers right away for the year get some automatic 
information that's reliable for that year and each year. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So we can see how it, it got a lot of favor in the royal courts. Um, whereas some of the Parashra stuff is great for counseling people on deep psychological issues, but maybe the kings don't want to hear that all the time. And they just want to know, when do I need to go to war? Or when do I need to not? Or this sort of thing. So, Right, exactly. And this will really show you, you know, are you going to win the war? What kind of war is it going to be? This is just a wonderful system. I, I, um, I, I use it all the time. I love it. So and, you how, know, sorry. Okay, go, no, go ahead. Oh, well, you just made me think. I was like, gosh, uh, a lot of people don't realize how long Laura's been doing astrology. So I maybe should have said something about that. But how long have you been studying astrology overall? And how long have you been doing this uh, Varshafal and studying this type of system? Um, oh, so I've been studying astrology since 1996. Wow. Yeah. It's a good wow. Yeah. And, um, I was, uh, working at one of those, um, metaphysical bookstores as an astrologer. And I started out doing Western and then in Vedic together, but sidereal Vedic. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know, 10 years later, uh, I met Ernst and, um, I was, uh, getting my, um, what is it? The I was getting certification from ACFA, um, and I went and I took the test and everything mm-hmm. got the certification. But I had discovered Ernst through someone else, through another teacher, Sam Jeppy, uh-huh. and um, and I was just blown away, you know. And, and so I just started studying with him, you know, constantly. I wanted to learn everything he had, and I learned, you know, took all of his courses. The minute he taught. Varshafal, something just clicked. I knew it. I, I, it was, it was just wow. This is just such an incredibly powerful predictive tool. Yeah. Um, and I just love to experiment with it and see, you know, what actually did come true and the, um, the predictions I made, and and I was just really happy with the results. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so ever since he taught that course, I was. Um, pre-2011 I think um yeah, it was an audio course so you've been studying yeah. that uh and you studied that course back then yes yeah, so you've been doing this for quite some time then mm-hmm. yeah I, I um least. and then um yeah I, I I stopped doing astrology for a while I took a five-year hiatus and mm-hmm. I wrote wrote some fantasy fiction novels yep, right that's true but um but you know, I came back and um, I'm really you know enjoying the ride and. Yeah, so. no, I understand the need to take a hiatus at times too. This is a intense type of work. I feel like it is. It really is. Uh, so yeah, you've yeah. had a lot of experience with this. I just want to say that because, yeah, I mean that 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 goes. That's worth saying. I mean, I could go and you know, teach a course in Varshfall. I've been doing it for one month though, you know, and you never really know how long someone's been working with material before they write a book or teach a course. And so I always like to know that that's great. Um, so, so, and you mentioned how it's, it's so simple. It's like, it really just is the transits. It's just a map of your transits at that moment, you know, that's that moment you were born based on the sun hitting your natal sun, which is so unique to you. You know, it, um, because then you also add in all of the divisional charts. You use divisional charts quite a bit. And even Tajik or Neela Kanthi, he actually said um, the hora or through perfection, the hora, etc. Meaning yeah. that means that through um, we perfect this art using the Vargas or the divisional charts. And this is another neat little trick you can do as well mm-hmm. with this technique. So you see, you know, you've got your year Lord, your ascendant Lord, your month of Lord, all that kind of stuff, right? So you take the um, um, D40, okay. the, the, the extreme, um, right. you know, extremes. Mm-hmm. So you take the D40, the Kavadamsha, I think yeah. it's called, and then you um, look at that chart for, for the Varshapal year, for the solar return year, any planets exalted or debilitated or just otherwise, you know, um, not in good shape Mm -hmm. that's going to show you some extreme things that happen during the year and that is not for the viewers like that is not the the kavidamsha of your birth chart you're talking about the kavidamsha inside 
the right. little, the little the return bar, chart. Yeah. Yeah. For the bars to fall. Okay. For the bars to fall. Mm -hmm. You look at the, the planets that if there are any debilitated or exalted planets, look at those planets, say hmm, some really good things are going to happen or some really challenging things are going to happen. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And then also you want to look for the part of fortune or the auspicious Shaham. Mm -hmm. Wherever that Shaham uh, is or what house or house cusp it's conjoined, then that is where you're going to get your fortune during the year. That is a place where you're going to, it's going to help you. It's, it's almost like another ascendant. So for example, okay. Yeah. You've got yours in Libra this year. Libra is your 11th house. Okay. So, so obviously income and help from your colleagues, you know, uh, your peers, recognition from your colleagues, your salary, being involved in group things, those are all going to give yeah. you awesomeness. So, um, and you know, I was in, uh, like a, I was in a cosmopolitan magazine this year and I didn't even really try to, so that might have something to do with maybe that's like an 11th house thing, like getting a value. I was the one actually. I was the one that did that. Wait, what? Um, she called me. Oh, really? And, yeah, she interviewed me, and um, it was uh, she. She was doing something totally different. Oh, okay. Um, writing about um, astrology school. She was writing about astrology school. Okay. And so then she and um, then she asked <laughs> about men astrologers or millennial astrologers. So I gave her your name. Oh, thank you. And Ryan's name. And so then, um, and then I never heard from her, you know, she, and then you came out with that. And I was like, oh, I already told her about that. I, I oh, gave her your name. I didn't know who, that's funny because yeah. she told me that now that I'm reflecting, she did tell me that she was just, someone mentioned me and I was like, that's so kind and sweet of someone to have done that. Yeah, that <laughs> and you know, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Laura. Um, you see, that's colleagues. That's oh. colleagues. Yeah, exactly. No, and yeah, like networking and yeah, right. you were that 11th house figure for yeah. me. Yeah, that's interesting that I see see that. Yeah. And so income should also be a good place. No, it's um, been a good year for me for that too. And overall been really good for my astrology career. All my readings, people have been like really, really happy with them. And I've been able to turn a lot more over and you know what I mean? And kind of increase and, and all that. And I'm working on this book that I told Laura about. It's just, you know, I'm, I, it's about like uh, mythology and it's an astrology book and stuff. And so anyways, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Start going into some examples. You can talk about my chart a little bit if you want, or we can okay. uh, go into PDFs, uh, the PDF or whatever that you mentioned too. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, like for this year, another thing you want to look for. So you look at the Varshafal chart as it is, as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. um, the ascendant for this year for you is a Sag. Mm -hmm. And um, you look at it that way, but you also, it's really important to do this as well, or you're going to miss something. Um, look at this chart from your natal ascendant. Oh, so, I did hear that at some point. Yeah, but I forgot yeah, about that. Okay. It's very important to look at it that way, or you will miss things. Okay. Um, so your natal ascendant is Pisces and your year Lord is Jupiter in the 10th house of career. Ah, so that, re that makes That's sense. another really big, um, career indication. Uh, it's, you'll, you'll, uh, excel at your career all, you know, all of this year until your next birthday. Okay. Um, you're going to get a lot of luck in your career. You know, you said you got interviewed by cosmopolitan, you know, you're going to have a lot of good opportunities in that area. It's one of the best places for the year Lord is the 10th house, not the ninth and the 10th house. Yeah. All right. You're just making me realize that, okay, really what we're doing is we're reinforcing how important transits are with that idea, because you're just thinking about what your ascendant is and what all those things we're doing transiting at that moment. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking, right. well, actually, that's just the transits I keep thinking of uh, as being good too. So that's yeah. just how interwoven all this stuff is. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and it's showing up in your Varshapal as well. Okay. You just reminded me of another important um, principle. Okay. So 
I, yeah, when I was first studying this, I was a little bit confused because I didn't have this point enforced enough. And then again, this year when I started re, re, re looking at it, the whole point that, that I think needs to be emphasized is that the birth chart is the, the first year and it, the birth chart might say you have amazing, uh, money in your life. So that means no amount of poverty. You know what I mean? So if you have a, a month in the 12th house, doesn't mean you go into poverty. Yeah, it means yeah. that within the ceiling of that, like in your PDF, you described it somewhere about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the birth chart. Like yeah, sorry. yeah. The birth chart is always the number one thing. If, if you look at a birth chart and, and this part, it says about this person, this person is an ascetic. They don't mm -hmm. care about the world. All they want to do is be a monk. And you see a year coming up with Venus is the year Lord. That doesn't mean they're going to get married. It right. means, or even in a relationship, it means just more Venetian things. It's a more worldly year mm -hmm. for them. Like, and also if you see a, an extremely poverty, poor situation in the birth chart, they're not going to become Bill Gates, you know, a year that Jupiter is the year Lord, or it's in Sagittarius in the second house. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, and I think that just uh, needs to be heard because otherwise, you yeah, think it's, yeah, it's very extreme. important. Yeah, you've got to read it in the context of the birth chart, absolutely. But but within that context, you can really see the influences of the year. You know, better luck years, worse luck years. Mm -hmm. Like I'll, I'll tell you, you know, when you have when you have Saturn as the year Lord, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. If Saturn is the year Lord, you can plan on health problems during that year. Oh, okay. Even though you're, you know, you could be, you could be um, some athlete, but you're still going to have health problems. Like whatever like I, your, um, whatever your standardized definition of health is, is going to be a peg lower that year. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I consider myself a really healthy person, but last year I had Saturn as the year Lord. So I'm like, and it was in Capricorn, but it was in my ascendant. So it was affecting my body. Gotcha. Okay. So it was like, huh, this is going to be interesting to see how this manifests. So what happened was I got, um, I pinched my nerve in my right arm and it, I had this pain going down my arm, aching and pain and uh -huh. from a nerve, you know, and I, and I like an idiot, I go out and play tennis and just made it worse and I could barely move my arm. And, um, and, and then just, I had, um, I, I had colds and just more heavy mm -hmm. allergies. I was just sicker. I was a lot sicker than I usually am. And that was because Saturn is the year Lord. Saturn gives illness. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And, but you know, it's not going to, it's not going to make me really sick because my car, that's not my karma, but based on the, the uh, birth chart. Yeah. I, I, so I, and I imagine when you get really good at it, you could read more things like you could read into the types of the health problems or the areas of the body yeah. or something even. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Definitely. Yeah. So, all right. So do you want to like show some examples and stuff through? Yeah. 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 Um, 